hello people welcome to gurukla i am jai so today in this video we are going to see about the concept of frequency division multiple axis so if you have you and watched any of my previous video i will leave the link for all the introductory videos of the subject related to wireless communication on the i button so please do check the i button section for the links for my previous videos so today without any delay we will get on to the today's topic that is frequency division multiple axis which is also abbreviated as fdma so before getting into the topic that is fdma we, sh we will should try to understand or we will try to relate how multiplexing and multiple axis are related so generally what do you mean by multiplexing so multiplexing is nothing but it is a way of sending multiple signals or stream of information over a communication link so when you look at the diagram so multiplexing is a concept where the information generated by different users will be combined and it will be sent over a common communication link and this process is what we call it as multiplexing so now what is multiple axis so multiple axis is nothing but so we know that there will be a base station and then this base station will be shared between the different uses so now i should find out a technique so that the different uses can able to access the channel between the base station and then the mobile station simultaneously and without any interference so this technique is what we call it as multiple access technique so the multiple access is a technique which is used to allow multiple users to access the channel that is available between base station and then the mobile station at the same time without any interference so that is what we call it as multiple access so multiple access can be performed in different ways and we will be seeing it very soon and then actually the basic relationship between the multiplexing and multiple access is multiple access is actually an application of multiplexing so this is a very basic relationship which has to be understood that the multiple access is an application of multiplexing so as i already said multiple access can be performed in different types so that is multiple access technique is further classified into different four major types that is frequency division multiple access time division multiple access spectrum spectrum multiple access and space division multiple access where spectrum spectrum multiple access is further classified into three types that is frequency hopped multiple access code division multiple access hybrid spectrum spectrum technique so today in this video we will be discussing in detail about the frequency division multiple axis and in the subsequent videos we will talk about the other multiple axes in detail so we will be discussing about the tdma and then cdma in the next subsequent videos so today's topic will be frequency division multiple axis hope you understood what multiplexing and multiple axis are so with this basic knowledge we will get into the topic of frequency division multiple axis so when we talk about frequency division multiple axis now we know what multiple axis is multiple axis is nothing but it is enabling multiple users to access the channel between the base station and then the mobile station so now the question is the key question of uh the entire concept is how do i differentiate the uses when i say multiple uses then there should be an principle which actually satisfies how do i differentiate multiple uses so the multiple uses here in fdma will be taken as the entire radio spectrum which is available over here so let us consider that this is the entire radio spectrum that is available for the communication systems will be further divided into several frequency ranges so now this will be acting as a particular frequency range this will be acting as a separate frequency range and this is separate and this is separate so when it is divided and each and every frequency range will be allocated to different uses like this so as it is depicted in the figure you could see that the different set of frequency is allocated for different uses so user 1 is using different set of frequency user 2 uses different set of frequency and user 3 uses different set of frequency so it is clear that each and every user is differentiated in terms of frequencies so that's the name frequency division multiple axis meaning 
each and every user will be differentiated in terms of frequencies so user 1 will have different frequency user 2 will have different frequency and user 3 will have different frequencies so that is what we will call it as frequency division multiple axis so and now to check the each and every uses are separated by different frequencies and you could also note that there is a gap intentionally left between each and every user and those gaps is what we call it as the god bands and that is intentionally introduced to avoid the interference between user 1 and then user 2. So this is what we call it as the god bands. So if the god bands are not properly fixed then uh, or in other words if the separation between user 1 and user 2 is not sufficiently uh, spaced then if this god band is very less then it will lead to interference which means user 1 and user 2 will not be separated over a proper frequency ranges so that it will give rise to the frequency sorry the interferences between user 1 and then user 2. So this is a more formal way of representing frequency division multiple axis and this helps us to understand the concept of how users are, or how the channels are allocated to different uses in uh, frequency division multiple axis. So this axis represents the frequency and this axis represents the code and this axis represents the time. So when we look into this particular diagram you can observe that the frequency is divided into different channels like channel 1 is of different frequency channel 2 is of different frequency channel 3 is of different frequencies so each and every channel so channel 1 will be allocated to a particular user and channel 2 will be allocated to a particular user and channel 3 will be allocated to a particular user and so on so that each and every user will have an unique frequency so that they could able to communicate by using that particular channel and all the communication will be done by using only with the frequency ranges allocated to that particular user. So this method of separation is what we technically call it as frequency division multiple axis. So just to take our discussion furthermore, there are certain things which have to understand on the frequency division multiple axis. So just to start off with, we will have a formal diagram and we will try to understand what are all the other things that is in FDMA. So FDMA assigns an individual channel to individual uses. So each and every channel that we have separated here will be allocated to individual uses. So say for an example, user 1 will be using channel 1, user 2 will be using channel 2, user 3 will be using channel 3 and so on. So likewise, individual user will be allocated with an individual channel. And then each user is allocated an unique frequency band or a channel. So this is what we call it as a frequency band, a band of frequency or we can call it as a channel. So this is allocated for each and every user and it is important to notice that each and every channels will have unique frequencies and none of the frequencies will be repeated again. So the channels are assigned on demand by the users. So the channel will be entirely available at the base station channel will be entirely available at the base stations and when each and every user demands for a particular frequency then the base station allocates a particular channel to the users. The same frequency is not allocated for two different uses which is just known by default. So the bandwidth of FDMA channel is relatively narrow so that will approximately range only up to 30 kilohertz. So the maximum bandwidth allocated for a particular user will not exceed more than 30 kilohertz. So this actually makes the FDMA systems to an narrow band systems. So generally FDMA systems are implemented only in the narrow band systems. And then the amount of intersymbol interference is typically low. Uh, since uh, this is the interference is naturally low because of we are introducing the god bands so since we are introducing the god bands the interferences will go down naturally so that there is no uh, separate need for including the equalization techniques in the system so that is an uh, advantageous point of your fdma and moreover, it is also important to understand that FDMA is an continuous transmission because we haven't made any separations on the 
time axis so that whatever the channel that is allocated to a particular user he can make use of this particular channel for the entire period of time since there is no separation on the time scale see this is the time axis and there is no separations made on the time axis so any frequency that is allocated to a particular user he can use it continuously as of his communication is required so once the communication is done the channel will be returned back to the base station so this is what we call it as the continuous transmission and then the overhead that is required for FDMA systems are also very less when compared to TDMA systems and uh, the overhead and then the TDMA will be discussed in detail in the subsequent videos but as of now it is uh, uh, expected to understand that the overhead is very much lesser when compared to TDMA which means the overhead of FDMA is less when compared to TDMA technique. And obviously FDMA definitely uses uh, devices called duplexes since both the transmitter and receiver operates at the same time. So since this is a full duplex concept, so we definitely need duplexes so which will make the frequency separation between transmitter and then the receiver. So this actually the use of this duplexes will actually increase the cost of FDMA and this point will be considered on the disadvantages side. An FDMA requires tight RF filtering to minimize the adjacent channel interference and it is understood that the guard band has to be proper between channel 1 and then the channel 2. If there is no proper separation or no proper guard band is allocated between channel 1 and channel 2 then definitely that will lead to interference between channel 1 and channel 2 and that interference is what we call it as adjacent channel interference. So the guard band has to be allocated very properly which demands a tight RF filtering. So the RF filters has to be designed in a very stringent way and it should work very accurately so as to uh, eliminate the interferences between the adjacent channel. So these are all the various pros and cons of FDMA systems. So there is another important thing which has to be considered while discussing frequency division multiple axis which is nonlinear effects. So where does this nonlinear effects come from? So so far we have discussed the concepts of FDMA from the mobile station perspective. So when you look at the base station perspective in FDMA systems so many channels actually share the same antenna at the base station. So it, say for an example if a system of FDMA uh, has 10 uses and all the 10 uses will be using 10 different frequencies we all know that and from the base station it is not possible to install 10 different antennas to serve 10 different uses. So usually on the optimal side we will be installing one single antenna as a base station which serves all 10 frequencies. So that is the meaning of this particular point which means that many channels or otherwise many users will share the same antenna at the base station. So in order to serve multiple users then obviously the power amplifiers and then the power combiners which we use at the base stations will be operated either near saturation region or at the saturation region. So from the basics of power amplifier techniques we all know that so this is the saturation side and this is the load line. So when a particular power amplifier or the power combiners are uh, operated to the point which is very nearer to saturation or at saturation itself which will actually lead to the nonlinear effects. So the power combiners and then the power amplifiers will exhibit a nonlinear characteristics. So nonlinear characteristics is generally nothing but that the signal will get spreaded or it will introduce some intermodulation frequencies. Intermodulation frequencies it will generate some other uh, irrelevant frequencies or the frequencies which is not required for the signal processing. So this will be the case when the power amplifiers and the power combiners are operated uh, either at the saturation region or near saturation region. So this actually creates a nonlinear effect and because of this nonlinear effect the signal will get spreaded. So this spreaded signal will obviously cause interferences like this and you could observe that the signal got spreaded over a particular region. So that is how the practical situations can be seen. 
and so this non-linearity effect will definitely introduce adjacent channel interferences so this has to be taken care of while so designing the frequency division multiple axis it is also important to take care of the operating ranges of uh, power amplifiers and then the power combiners so that uh, it should not be kept uh, saturation or uh, near saturation so as to suppress the adjacent channel interference so next to discuss about the capacity of fdme so what will be the total number of uh, channels that i can create by using fdma is given by so number of channels that can be simultaneously supported in fdma systems is actually represented by an equation n is equals to bt minus 2 times b god divided by bc and where bt is the total spectrum allocation for the system and b god is the god band allocation at the edge of allocated spectrum so b god is nothing but the god band frequencies total amount of frequencies that is left for the god left for allocating the god bands and bc is the total channel bandwidth so substituting all these values will actually tell us what will be the maximum number of channels that can be created at by using frequency division multiple axis technique so that is all about uh, the things to be discussed about FDMA. So just to summarize the concepts, whatever we have studied over here, we started off with uh, the relationship between multiplexing and then the multiple axis. And then we understood that the multiple axis is an application of multiplexing. And later on, we have understood that there are different types of multiple axis techniques available, FDMA, TDMA. Um, spec spectrum techniques and all these techniques are available and out of which we have discussed in detail about the frequency division multiple axis and in frequency division multiple axis we just started off with the principle of operation and then we discussed certain pros and cons related to FDMA and then we have seen what exactly the nonlinear effects of FDMA, when does the nonlinear effects arises and what will be the effects of and what will be the causes of nonlinear effects of FDMA. So all these things were discussed under nonlinear effects of FDMA. And finally, what could be the total capacity of total channel capacity of FDMA systems. So that is all about today's particular video. And I hope this video founds useful to understand the concepts related to frequency division multiple axis technique. So we will see you soon in the next video. Until then, happy learning.